Good evening, good evening, good evening, friends, good evening. This is Diane, and I know many of you may be wondering what in the world is she doing online with a live so late talking about the spirit of offense? Well, friends, as usual, um, I like to say I was minding my own business you know doing my own thing because you know after having such a great day today at the wow conference today the woman on the wall you know conference and we were so empowered today by the wonderful word that was brought you know to the different uh by the different women the different speakers who were there they were on hand you know to teach the women in attendance and you know it was such a powerful time a wonderful time and what was so striking even about the event is the the difference in delivery of each woman who spoke you know each of them was just so different and they brought the word of the Lord and it was just a wonderful experience. Uh, just a quick synopsis because I'm really talking about the spirit of offense tonight, you know, as led by the Lord. Because, I mean, come on people, this is Saturday night. You know, I don't really do the lives on the weekends, but I am open to the spirit of God. And whenever he says, speak, I speak. Whenever he says, write. I write so I'm obedient to him but just to get back to the event today you know for those who live here in the BVI but who missed it you know the the speakers started out you know sister Kathy Graham and she started out speaking about Rahab you know and the way that people would view Rahab uh, Rahab, we all know, was a harlot. You know, I'm not going back over what happened, but just to give you a quick synopsis, Rahab was a harlot. And what was kind of key is the fact that, th no, this is something that I never, never really looked at before. Rahab actually lived on the city wall, you know, her home, her dwelling was on the city wall. And that was a place that was a very strategic place. But would you believe that Rahab was one of the women in the Bible, everybody knew she was a prostitute, you know, a harlot. And up to today, even though, this is one of the things that Sister Kathy brought out, that even though, you know, her family was saved, her household was saved, all of that, even today, people still refer to her as Rahab the harlot, you know. And of course, she went into, even when the Lord has changed their identity, people still remember the old you or remember you by what you used to do you know so she started us off really well you know uh, right after her was minister carthy and tittle you know and she came with the real stuff <laughs> when i say real stuff you know she gave us an acronym you know for the word for real r-e-a-l and you know it it was just a special time she ministered to the women she ministered to the women uh, in a very special and powerful way. And then right after her came Minister Roxanne Toussaint, you know, from TCI. And, you know, this woman is a warrior. <laughs> and, you know, even she didn't realize it at the time. She actually gave us an acronym as well. And I realized that it was Leo, L-E-O. You know, and I'm deliberately not even telling you most of the stuff because some of you should have been there, but some said they didn't know. You know, but God did a work with us. And then after her came Minister Shandria Turnbull, you know, who shared on wealth and so on from not just a monetary perspective. It was deeper than that, you know, wealth in body, wealth in wholeness and so on. So it was a really powerful time Four very powerful women brought together, you know, uh, by Sister Dacia, uh, Dacia Daniels Louis, who was the host and it was just a great, great time, wonderful time. So I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you my frame of mind. And, you know, I'm here now just kind of getting ready to turn in to bed because I don't want to be late for Sunday school tomorrow. 
<laughs> which starts at 9 a.m. You know, and the Lord just brought something to my heart and to my mind and just prompted me to share it with you. And it has to do with the spirit of offense. Now, many people are, I mean, can identify with offense. Somebody offended you at some point in your life or you would have offended somebody at some point in your life. Offense is nothing new friends it is nothing new it has been going on for a while as a matter of fact the passage of scripture that you saw me put there if you read that you would you would understand exactly where i'm coming from you know um in terms of even jesus <laughs> people were offended by him in the things that he said in the things that you know were coming out of his mouth so it's it's not new it's not a new thing offense didn't just start today or last week or last month or last year it's been going on for quite a while but just to read a little bit of the passage so you can understand what happens sometimes now i specifically put from 60 to 70 but the story really started in the verses before where jesus was teaching you know he was always teaching and he started to say to them, well, John 6, John chapter 6 and verse 45, for example. Let's look at that before. As it is written in the scriptures, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Jesus was speaking. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I who, has, who was sent from God and I've seen him. Then Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer so the world may live, is my flesh. Hmm. Then the people began arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They asked. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life with you. So all that Jesus was saying was cause for concern to these people. And they start to murmur, they start to complain. Long and short, they got vexed, okay? These people got vexed. They were like, what is he taught? What is he teaching us, right? So he said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. So he was in the church. Yes, basically. All right. So some of the disciples came up to him and they're like, this is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Because of course, they too would have heard the complaints and the murmurings. Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, and this is verse 61 now. Remember, I'm reading from John 6, verse 61. Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, does this offend you? Then what will you think if you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you, it's note that friends, note that. He said, the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe me. For Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe and he knew who would betray him. Then he said, that is why I said that people can't come to me unless the father gives them to me. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. This is verse 66. John 6, 66 says, At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, Are you also going to leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus said, this is verse 70, I chose the 12 of you, but one is a devil. All right, we stop right there. Now, 
the reason why I stressed on the verse that talks about, you know, Jesus being spirit and life, it's because Jesus was speaking truth. You understand? He was speaking truth. No, if the people did not understand, no, if it was in our day, right? Because I don't believe in us just reading the scripture and leaving it on the, on the pages of the Bible. We must bring it to life in our lives today. If it was our day, you know, if, if Jesus is teaching and he's saying something and they don't understand, what should they have done? Not to ask him to explain, but instead of doing that, you know, they got upset, they got offended. Well, hear this. In the body of Christ today, it's the same thing, all right? There's this spirit of offense that's destroying the church. It's destroying the body of Christ. Nobody wants to hear the truth. Some people do not love to hear the truth. Everything offends them. They're thin-skinned. You know, it's like they walk around with a chip on their shoulder, just waiting to hear somebody say the wrong thing, to jump on them or to become offended or to walk away, you know, or to leave the church or whatever it is that people do. Let me tell you, friends, when we look at the word offense, right? Simple thing. We look at the word offense. Now, you know, offense uh, is spelled in two different ways, depending on if you're, you know, English or if you're American. But... When you look at it, you're, you're talking about, and I'm, I'm speaking now of disapproval, you know, dislike. You're irritated. It's like indignation. You know, you're resentful. You're angry. You're annoyed. Something happened that has caused you to be displeased. So that's the meaning of the word offense that I am, I am talking about now. All right. I'll give you, before I go into, you know, the different ways that people, um, or we should look out for, or how to identify it. Um, a while back, I'm sharing this now, this is a personal thing that happened. A while back, a young lady sent me some, a message in WhatsApp, right? I did not approve of the message because the message that was sent to me was somebody with a, a, a title or a post right here in the BVI, a religious title that was tearing down a fellow minister in Christ. I mean, terrible things were being said about a fellow minister in the body of Christ. And I did not approve of that type of message being sent to me. And I thought that the person who sent it to me was mature enough in Christ to know that that's not the type of message that you circulate, that you send around, that you carry throughout the place for people to read. And I don't know what was expected. I don't know if they had expected me to read it and circulate it. or, But it was terrible because they were tearing down another minister. Now, this is the hypocrisy. I, I don't like that I see happening in the body of Christ. Well, y'all know I'm going to start out soft and then I'm going to just get to the meat of the matter. Because the Lord did not keep me back from my bed to come and play around tonight. This is one of the hypocrisies that I see in the body of Christ. There are persons who have very big titles in church. It doesn't matter what it is. But it could be pastor, it could be apostle, it could be deacon, it could be bishop, you know, uh, uh, leader, any sort of leadership position. And we see it everywhere. It's not just in the BVI. I saw the same thing in Jamaica when I lived there. And I'm pretty much sure it's going on in the USA, Canada, UK, wherever my listeners are. It happens everywhere. And the hypocrisy I see is this, where persons who are very titled, who present themselves as very learned, you know, very steeped in the word of God, resorting to a level of low-down, dirty games, you know, as, as, as leaders in the body of Christ. And they do some foolishness, and then they expect those that they lead to turn a blind eye, wink at it, 
don't pay it any mind because you know that's god's man or that's god's woman so they're not setting any example and then they want to come and teach people the right way when they're not doing it that's hypocrisy that's hypocrisy and if nobody else wants to call a spade a spade on this situation diane lewis will you understand because i'm not afraid of no demon we have to speak the truth in the body of Christ, right? So this sister sent me this thing and I kindly asked her not to send me such messages because if you look at the content of the message, you would understand that this is not something. The Bible says in Philippians that we should think on whatever is lovely, whatever is true, whatever is honest, whatever is of good report, there was no good news in that piece of thing that came to me. And I kindly asked the person not to send me any such things because normally they would send me jokes and they're funny. I laugh, you know, really. They would send me really nice things until I got this piece of trash, I called it. And I said, don't send me these things. And I got nothing else from the person, nothing else. I mean, it's their prerogative. They... They, you know, it's like they didn't want to bother send me anything because I, I guess they realized that I was not playing around. So maybe they said to themselves, you know what, let me not send anything at all, lest I send the wrong thing. But this is what strikes me about the whole thing. This person is a Christian. All right. I asked you not to send me these things. And your response was to not send anything at all. All right, fine. A non-Christian woman, an unsaved lady, sent me a video. I don't think she meant to send it to me. It could be that, you know, I got bundled up in some group that she has. And this video came to me, a very disgusting video. I messaged her, unsaved, you know, mark what I'm saying. And I said to her, please do not send me videos like this please i'm asking you this video is very disgusting please do not send me such videos i said god bless you i still love you but i have to tell you all right the person responded and they were so apologetic you know she said she's sorry and so on and would you believe you know as usual because this is somebody that sends me things all the time she just kept sending her stuff, but nothing like that, nothing like that. It was, you know, uplifting things. So I'm saying, look here now, the Christian made a decision not to send me anything at all. So it's like, okay, well, you don't want my stuff, well, I ain't sending you nothing. And these are the kind of behaviors that Christians exhibit and then say, oh, you're judging me, you're judging me, you don't know. You, you know, sometimes we just have to tell the truth and shame the devil, right? I believe in my honest estimation that the, the woman who was not a Christian had a better response to my request. She understood where I was coming from. She did not mind being told the truth about the matter. You understand? All right. In our churches today, we have situations that cause people to become offended in the very church, in the church. So you would have people who are going to church on a regular basis and then something upset them and they stop. Let me tell you what offended people do. Offended people don't pay offering, or I shouldn't say pay, because I don't believe in this word pay. This thing where we're talking about pay tithes and pay and pay, no. I don't agree with this word pay. You understand? Because the Lord has given to us freely and he expects us to give back to him freely. So I don't use that word when it comes to any gift that we are offering to the Lord. So, you know, offended people, the first thing they try to do is, one, um, well, they ain't getting my money because they believe that is their money, their individual money that's holding up the church, right? So they don't do anything. They don't give anymore offended people that all right this is what some do that long before anything else happens so they don't want to give they don't want to take part in anything no listen i'm not naive 
I know that there are going to be times when people are hurt, you know, genuinely hurt, like somebody embarrassed them, somebody shamed them. They were trying to help out maybe in a particular ministry and some misunderstanding happened and somebody shamed them. So they decide, you know, before I get in anything, let me just hold my corner over here and don't bother get involved in anything. So you do have people doing that. And that's offense. You know, they're offended. We don't want to, to call it that, but it really is what it is. No, if that person doesn't be careful, that offense can turn into resentment. It can turn into hatred where the person who embarrassed them, every time they see them, they, they turn the other way or they go and tell 10 people what the person did because that's the other thing that offended people do. They share information with everybody except the person that really offended them. So you have that all the time, right? You have that scenario. So we have to be so careful, friends, that when we are offended, when somebody does us something wrong, that we take it to the cross and we handle things the way that the Bible has instructed us to do it. So for example, when you read the book of Matthew 18, he sets out there in clear terms, how offense should be handled. You know, when, when persons rub you the, the wrong way, you know, you go to them and you and them, just you and them, just you and them, you don't, invi you don't invite anybody else into the equation yet. You know, you, you, don't, you don't go and uh, tell everybody, you know, what they do. You go straight to them, right? Matthew 18, let me get to the, 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 the part here that talks about that because all of our answers, all right, are in the Bible. So Matthew 18, verse 15, it says, If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. No. Are we following the steps to have offense dealt with, to have correction, you know, brought to certain things? Are we following that step? Or we're going beyond, you know, and we're, we're doing our own <laughs> system, our own court, you know, our own kangaroo justice, you know, we jump to conclusion and, you know, and we make our decisions and then we start to keep malice and we're not talking to the brother and we're not talking to the sister because something they did offended us. You understand? And then here the thing, we're not talking to the brother or the sister, but we still want to come and lead worship. We still want to come and be an usher. We still want to come and preach. We still want to come and pray and lay hands on people on the altar. When the Bible has taught us that when we have any kind of offense going on, leave the gift at the altar, go and make it right, and then come back and offer the gift. But you see, we don't practice these things anymore. It's like anything goes. Well, she troubled me. So, you know, I ain't chatting to she. I ain't talking to she. But let a breeze blow and everybody's speaking in tongues. They're not speaking to their brother, you know. They're not speaking to their sister. But everybody in tongues. I've seen all levels of leadership do this kind of thing in the church. Somebody offended them. Somebody rubbed them the wrong way. Somebody said something that they didn't like and they stopped talking to the person like seriously i've seen pastors do it i've seen praise and worship leaders do it and i'm, I'm calling out leaders now because some of us don't understand that we are we should be leading by example leading by example if we are offended we have the remedy in the word of god 
Let's follow the word of God. Somebody do something, you know, like it. Go to them. Some people say, oh, I don't like confrontation. It's not, con it's how you handle the situation that makes it a solution or a bigger problem. And it needs a level of humility. Humility. Let me tell you, one of the reasons why I love, admire, and respect my spiritual leaders. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. They, they have so many qualities that I admire. But one of them, one of the qualities that they have is humility. And that's why I admire them. I remember a situation came up a while back. I mean, nobody has to know what it is. I'm just saying. And I went to my spiritual leaders you know, just to express how I was feeling about the whole thing. And you know what was their first response? Their first response was, we're truly sorry. You understand? We're sorry, Sister Diane. And that made a difference, all the difference in the world. Sometimes people say, you know, um, that's my pastor, that's my first lady, uh, take your mouth off them, all of that. Let me tell you, I don't believe in anybody tearing down anybody. I don't care what title they have. No member should be tearing down pastor and no pastor should be tearing down member. No pastor should be tearing down other pastors. And I'm seeing it happen right here in the BVI. It's happening. Ministers who should be leading, tearing down one another. All right. So we know we have a problem. We know we have an issue. How do we handle it? The Bible gives us clear instructions of how these things should be handled. And friends, on a serious note now, if we do not watch this spirit of offense, listen, it's, it, it can lead us into some dark and dangerous places. Because offense, when it turns into resentment, let me tell you, when somebody resent you, you know, when they hate you, huh, <laughs> It's like all hell will be breaking loose because they're going to look for every single way to get at you, to come at you. And if you don't have God on your side, me say, as we say in Jamaica, dog, nyam your supper. Or some people here say, crap or smoke your pipe. If you get a real enemy, no, we, we know the real enemy is the devil. But listen here, sometimes we blame devil for things or we put ourselves in. Let's be honest about that. We can't blame the devil for everything where we do. Everybody was given a free will. Yes, we know that the enemy manipulates. We know that he's very cunning. We know that he comes in ways sometimes that we least expect. But when we realize what he's doing, we need to take authority over that and mash it up in the name of Jesus. Some people do not want conflict to end. They don't want offense to end. It's like a perpetual thing. It's like they, they, they thrive in, in strife. You have some people like that. They love problems and malice. They, they can't wait for see you look on them funny for stop talking to you. Some people are like that. They, I don't know if it's the way they were brought up. I don't know, but you have some people like that. They don't have a problem not talking to people, but still want to call themselves Christians. I don't understand it. All because of an, uh, an offense, something happened, they never like it, and they decide, well, hmm, I am not coming back to this church. I am not going down there amongst them hypocrites. Because you know what they do? They do me this and they do me that. Listen. I've learned, friends. I've, I've been hurt in church. I'll, I'll get knocked about all kind of way, right? What we fail to understand or what we fail to uh, follow God's word with is when he says, listen, if you don't forgive people their trespasses, then, you know, you, you, you're not giving me any room here to work with. The Lord expects us, friends. Yes, there are going to be times when the hurt is deep. The hurt, it's it, it hard, it cut you to the core, man. Right? But we have to find it in ourselves. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us, to forgive people, to release them. You understand? Release them. 
release them. You see, even that scenario that I mentioned when I just started about one minister, you know, writing these derogatory things and tearing down another minister. You know what was kind of weird about that whole thing? This thing circulated throughout the entire BVI and I never saw one, one, one mature or otherwise minister who got it in their phones, right? Stood up and said, this is wrong. This is wrong and I'm bringing it up again because I realize that there is the spirit in the BVI of cover up. You understand? Everything we sweep under the rug is like, oh, it didn't happen. As if we believe if we push our head in the sand, the situation goes away. No, it means when things are not addressed, it means that they will happen again. You understand? No, we understand why the Lord himself steps in at times and correct and fix some situations and when god does that you know what people say oh the devil attacked me the devil attacked oh let's bind the devil he's attacking me he's attacking my family let me tell you all something some people are suffering because of the things that they did you understand that sound bad but is the truth suffering because of the chastening of the lord because of foolishness that they did and sometimes people come to me, like, I tell people, don't do that. Please don't do it. They come, ah, oh, Sister Diane, I want you to believe with me in prayer. And them no one tell you, pray for what? Listen, I am not joining with anybody in any prayer. You don't have to tell me the whole air business. But give me an idea so I, I know how to pray. Because if your foot hurt you, I'm going to pray for your head. Because you did not tell me what it is. No, oh, well, if you have discernment, you should know. Really? If you want me to pray with you so that, you know, you could uh, get the, the, the woman's husband. Some pr prayer requests have come in like that. Pray for my relationship. When you check, is married people they're with? All right, that's a whole new topic altogether. Right? But I'm saying, if you can't say, you're, you and the person don't have that relationship, and you're going to contact somebody, oh, pray with me. There was a, a passage in the book of Acts, right? Where those Jews came together and decided they're not eating or drinking until they kill Paul. These people were in fasting. You understand? And I'm sure they were praying too. So that is why you're, you have to be so careful when people come to you about, join with me in prayer. And them now and tell you where you join with them both. You understand? Be careful because some people want people to join in with them to pray against people, right? To pray down fire and brimstone on people that don't do them nothing. Let's be careful, friends. Let's be careful. I mean, that's a whole new topic in and of itself. But I'm saying back to offense, back to offense, back to being offended, right? Offended people do a lot of things that God is not pleased with. So we have to be careful. Right? It, it's, it's some people. All right. All right. I'll use myself as an example because I like to talk my business. Right? I, I saw a, a friend um, made a post recently where he said, you know, he speak out his whole business. He, he, he lay himself out there. Like he said, he tell people, you know, the naked truth about his life so that they can, you know, walk well clothed then. I think that's the summary of what he was saying. He tells people his business so that they can fix theirs. He don't have to talk about the business because, you know, so many things has happened to him that he can talk about. I'm saying sometimes, right, you have situations that cause real hurt and real offense. And the only way to solve that is separation. I know about those kind of things, right? Because it happened in my life. The only way that you can fix that is for a, a, a break to come right there. You know, some sort of separation. It's just like when two people are fighting and the teacher would, you know, pull them apart and sometimes she send one to that corner and the other one to that corner. Sometimes what is needed is a timeout. Then I'm talking about a spiritual timeout where you give yourself some time, right, to process things. But even in then, you still have to guard your heart and your mind. You must. Because if during that time out, all you're thinking is, you know, you're scheming how you're going to get back at the person. 
I've seen it happen. Conflict happen, people separate, and somebody just continues to pursue the other one. Still talking about them, still doing this thing. That is why I tell you all, friends, that the Lord had to deliver me from people. Because I don't get flustered again like before. I used to. You know, when people say things and uh, some of them, them lie so till you, you, you just have to laugh. Sometimes when you hear some of the foolishness, all you can do is laugh because you know the devil bad, but you never know he was so bold face. Tell lie. Lie was sound like truth because people believe that, you know, because people were close to your business and to your life. Anything they say, it goes like that. So I know, I know that people can concoct and make up and, you know, it really caused that deep hurt. But let me tell you, I had to learn to release people, release, release the offense. All right. I don't know how many of you heard me share already that I used to work at this place. Right. The BVI is small. It's right here. It happened. I don't have to go into the details. Who know? No. But I'm sharing this. I was offended one time by a former employer, offended bad work, you know, and after a while resigned and they said that, you know, my resignation came at a bad time if I could retract and I retracted my resignation and, you know, just to give some more time at the office. I mean, you, you, you wouldn't, if you really wanted to get rid of somebody from a job, you would not ask them to retract their resignation. If the person was such a horrible and terrible worker, you would never, when they resigned, you said, thank you, go on. <laughs> right? You would be so happy when they resigned. But I was asked to take back my resignation and I did. I'm sharing this because this testimony has brought a level of freedom and deliverance to several people that I've shared it with. All right. So I continued working for another couple of months. Later on, I said, no, nah, man, this is not working out because I was so ready to start my own business. I was so ready to go on out and do my own thing. So it's not like I was resigning to even go and work at another company. And six months after re retracting, you know, my resignation, um, I resigned again. But this time the language was a little stronger. I said, please accept my resignation. I didn't get any response. I gave 30 days notice. So when I turned in the resignation, I would have left the job at the month end. Eh -eh. By the time I reached home in my house, messenger came knocking at my front door, pom pom, letter in hand. I thanked the messenger, went upstairs. I had visitors in my home at that time, and I don't know how I bowled so to go, bust letter and read it. Not allowed. I just read it, and the visitors were there. And when I read the letter, I just started to cry. And they were like, what happened? What happened? Like, they said, me open this envelope, and tears coming after that. You know what it was? The letter said that they had accepted my resignation, but I need not return to the office. Me say... The letter made me feel like me as some big criminal when my aunt would say criminal. <laughs> right? Made me feel like me a criminal. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? What have I done to be treated like this? Right? And I was so upset with those employers. I really was. I'll tell you this, friends. I'll be transparent. I vexed with them for a whole year. I said, if God did come in at the year, I hell me gone. Hell because I harbored that resentment in me because I felt that they should not have treated me that way. Talk about offense. Offended was joke, man. I was resentful. I, I, I shared this even with uh, my Sunday school class at church, right? And I said to them, every time I hear the ambulance on the road, I wish it was one of them at night. I, that's, how, that's how resentful I had become because of how I was treated by a company that I thought I had given, you know, part of the best set of years of my life. I felt bad. And let me tell you how I knew it was one year that I had these people in my heart. As I say, thank God. Him never, hey, God merciful, you know, God merciful. He is a merciful God. So one year after the event that we had at the church rolled around again. And, you know, the church invited all these dignitaries and whoever. And my employers were a part of these dignitaries. All right. So them come and me look. Look over the corner. I'm in one corner. They're over the other corner. Me look over there. Me say, wait. How are they doing at church? Because let me tell you. You see when you're hurting, 
Man, you, you want fire and brimstone come down and, and burn up everybody who, who hurt you. That's how bitter some people get. I, I know what I'm talking about. I looked across, I saw them, and it's like, I start get heartburn immediately. I, suddenly, I became judge, juror, and executioner. Suddenly, I don't, you know, what I'm doing in church. It's like, imagine my boldness and my brightness thinking that these people had to have an excuse or a good reason to be in church because I felt they had no right to be there. And that is how some people feel, right, about people who offend them. They feel like God should just strike them. No. And they forget the many times that they offended God and offended others. You understand? And I dare and they're singing uh, praise and worship songs. I mean, they're there worship and a you know, I worship same way. And the Holy Spirit started to work on me. The Holy Spirit started to work on me. And I'm there trying to worship. And I tell you, I say, it cannot work. That's why I know, friends, you have a lot of pretenders in a church. You have a lot of pretenders in a church. Listen, I, I want to keep this real. And let me keep it in English. Because I don't want to speak too much in the Jamaican. And people lose, you know, what I'm saying. Listen, I saw the people in church. I was there trying to worship and it, it was not working out. The Holy Spirit arrested me because you see, the Lord had a special mark on my life and there was no way he was going to let me get away with that. No way. Even if I'm have to throw me down a ground. You understand? I make me cough out whatever demon did they ride me for me to feel that way about people that he loves. Not because they offended me. God still loved them. And that is the part that we miss. We think because we have art against somebody that the Lord don't love them and the Lord not care for them. The quicker we get rid of that notion, it's the better and the quicker we will heal from being offended. You understand? I'm a dear, I try worship and it, it, friends, it is not working out. I said that the Holy Spirit just arrested me and said, you hypocrite. Seriously? 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 Right? And when I couldn't take it no more, I had to cross the floor. You understand? I could have gone privately in the office. You know, go tell them how I feel and, you know, make things right. But no. No, it, it had to come to a big public thing. No, because obviously the Lord was dealing with me and I did not pay him any mind. He said, all right, we're going to fix this and we're going to fix this today. And we're going to fix it right. And let me tell you, I had to cross that floor. And I remember just holding on to, you know, the wife first. And I said to her, I forgive you. And then I hugged husband and said, I forgive you. And then me and the wife, they hug up and a ball and a snort and a, all of that. Because, you know, a release had come. A release had come. And let me tell you, from that day, we never had any kind of interference with our relationship again. Because why? The Lord spoke to my heart. At the end of the day, you know, if, if we want to ignore his voice, it's our choice. But if you mean business for the king, you're going to do what God says. And we made that thing right in the sight of God. I don't know about in the sight of man because sometimes man think they know and they don't know anything. All right. But I'm saying, friends, freedom came to my life. You know, it's like a dam just break. And it was just after that blessing after blessing after blessing sometimes we're holding up our blessings because of our offense because we're harboring resentment bitterness you know a grudge malice we're not talking to them you know all of this thing you know what i see happening even on social media we use social media to try and punish one another you know the world have to know that i'm not talking to that one you know what i see some people do you would have a, a post. I'm, I'm just saying because the devil is cunning. You'd have a post. And when somebody wanted to know that they're not into you, say so you have no kind of funny feeling towards them, you know, and you make a comment or something, <laughs> they got you and they make sure they skip your own. 
You understand? So it's like they're trying to send some subliminal message. Apart from just coming out and just saying something, some kind of message. You know, some unfriend people, some, some show their displeasure in all kind of different ways. Right? But the long and short, you don't have to be my friend on social media. But make sure we love one another. Make sure we're hard to write. Make sure so we're hands clean. You understand? Let's not cause offense. These disciples were, of, they were so offended in Christ that they walked with him no more. That's what the word says. They were so vexed. Right? It's like who you think he is? Who this man Jesus think he is? Isn't he the carpenter's son? Where he come from telling us all these things. And in verse 66, the Bible said it. It's right there. They turned away. They deserted him. They did not walk. If they did it to Christ. So I'm saying no. There are going to be times when there are hard sayings. There are going to be words of truth. There are going to be words of correction. And because you're offended, you miss your blessing. You miss the mark. You understand? You know how much times people set things and, well, I know I can be a bit harsh at times. I, I'm not taking myself out of the equation. All right? I know. I know I set things and I forgot to apologize. Because, I, you know, at the time it was spoken in anger or some kind of thing. And I have to go and say sorry. I really am. And mean it. Because some are not genuine. Right? But I'm saying there are so many times when things are going to be spoken and it's a word of correction it's a word of rebuke and we as christians have to learn how to accept that how to know when it's gonna make us grow when it's gonna make us better persons right don't be offended for every little thing yeah the pastor says something and you never like it let it slide you know let jesus handle that but if you find say it will really affect your worship go and deal with it don't just start keep malice and stop talk to the people and then come up in a church and jump up like me and I'll go on like you're still saved and you're still Christian and you know say you're doing foolishness. You understand? Let's cut it out, friends. The Lord is saying tonight, get rid of the offense and watch and see if in this 2019, blessings not overflow your life. Blessing after blessing, they will not be able to stop you or stop your blessing if you just get rid of the offense friends right get rid of it you may say how how do i do that sister diane that's easier said than done pray pray man fast see what the devil is doing it is him right it is him trying to cause problems in relationships listen i've lost some relationships and i know some of them unless jesus himself do it they're not going to be reconciled. I, I, I mean, I, I, just, I just know that Jesus would have to work a special miracle. You understand? Because there are some kind of attitudes and different things that are displayed that's controlled by the devil. And unless people stop yielding themselves to what the devil wants, some situations are going to remain the same you understand? So because I know that, I am not going to worry myself and run behind anybody. Sometimes people want you to come behind them like little puppies. Always, you're always the one saying I'm sorry. Always the one apologizing. All when you're not wrong, you know, my grandmother teach me. She taught her grandchildren. Listen, sometimes you have to take the wrong to be right. Take the wrong to be right. In other words, don't always just say, well, yeah, and I'm me and then for me start it. It's not me and you no. Know, sometimes you have to even take the wrong. I'll apologize for things where you don't even do. But some people say, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Listen, <laughs> if you really want peace sometimes, you just do some crazy things for God. For God. Let them laugh at you. Let them call you foolish. Let them call you idiot. Right? I had a friend who was very upset with me because she saw me keep going after people who, you know, seem not to want to have anything to do with me. And she was so upset. And after a while, I got the message. And I realized, you know, yeah, they really know I have nothing to do with me. <laughs> I'm just leave them. I left them alone. What do you think I'm going to do now? Lose sleep over situations that I don't have any control over? No way. I release and let God do the rest. And I'm seeing changes in my life 
because I've made a decision not to harbor resentment, not to harbor hate. Let them say what they want. Let them feel how they want. I know my heart. The Lord knows my heart. He knows where I stand. He knows that I just don't like foolishness and some people don't like me for that. And that's all right. You understand? The last time I was somebody's type, I was donating blood. I am not everybody's type. And I realize that. But the Lord knows that I love people. And I love him. Okay? I don't keep malice. If you want to chat to me, I fear business that. If you see me, I come and cross to the next side. But still I call out to you. You understand? But I'm not going to run behind you every single time. No. No. There comes a time when you know where you stand and you leave some things to God. And that's what I'm doing. Right? So the Lord pricked me and said, look, let's talk about offense. Because it's destroying the body of Christ. It's damaging relationships. It's causing havoc in the church. This one now talk to that one. That one I gossip about the one there. The one there talk this. And some of it are lie. Lies, lies, lies. And we can't see the enemy at work. That one said that about you. Yeah, some people, you know, they're busy bodies. They go and they tell lies. When they say people have good relationships, they go and tell lies. And try to get in between the relationship. Them now have no friend. And they see these two people moving good as friends. And they go and spread lies. And then sometimes the friend them like them now have no sense either. Because you should know your friend. Right? You should know your friend and know if your friend would say something like that. Or you go to them and, you know, and in love and say what's going on here. And sometimes you find out it was the plan and plot of the enemy all along. To disrupt relationships. You understand? Sometimes the Lord gives you favor with people and others see that and they don't like it. So they take up the telephone. Oh, I see you, see you hanging with so-and-so lately. <laughs> you, you know what? And they're talking as if, you know, oh, it's just a simple matter. But they're wrecking relationships, trying to get the person to think badly about you. I see a lot of Christians, they're very conniving and snake-like. They do things like that. Okay, so pastor talking, you know, too much to this one over here. The vex. Pastor, yeah, yeah, if you ever know, don't trust her, pastor. Don't trust her. <laughs> I'm going to do a drama one day about these things happening in the body of Christ. There are so many actors in our churches. And then they look at you and they're smiling sweetly. Like they think you don't know what they have done. Sometimes the Lord reveals it. You understand? So that you can know how to walk and how to pray. Alright friends. I'm going to pray now. I'm wrapping this up. Because I truly believe that the Lord wants us to get rid of offense. Just get it out of our lives. Out of our system. You know the Bible says. If it's possible be at peace with all men. No. There are going to be times when it really not possible. And it's in times like that that separation must come. You understand? So don't, don't get me wrong now, and let's not get it twisted, to think that we can fix every situation. No, there are some situations where if God not fix it, you can't fix it. Because people are bent, they, they have made up their minds, so they not chat to you. So what you going to do? What you going to do? Huh? Fight them? Up in their face every week? Begging friendship? No, sir. No. You have to know when. When to get the message. We used to have a little joke um, in Jamaica. Where bones are not provided, dogs are not invited. Know when to get the message, man. And stop belittling yourself, trying to be everybody's friend. Right? Meekness is not weakness. Humility doesn't mean that you just lie down and play dead. We have to know when to humble ourselves. The Bible says to humble ourselves under the hand of God, under the hand of the Almighty. Trust me, we know how God humble us, so we better know when to humble ourselves. But I'm saying, meekness is not weakness. Don't become a victim because you're trying to prove to the world that you're so Christian-like and you're so godly. Hello. You don't need to go through all of that sometimes. You don't have a thing to prove to a soul. Once you know the Lord knows your heart and you're not harboring resentment and hatred there, 
right? Let them talk. Let them judge you. Let them say what they want. God knows your heart. Just get rid of the offense. The Lord, I forgive them. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. All right? I'm not going a minute over an hour. So I'm watching the time. I'm finishing now. I'm wrapping up now. I'm going to pray. And I'm just going to ask the Lord, you know, to help us. Because tomorrow is another church day for some of us. And some of we are going to church, God jump up and sing. We will hypocrite self. And we know so we not talk to the brother and sister. Because we offended. Get that right first. When you go to church, first thing before you go, boy, you lead worship or you boy, you have a sing pan choir or sing pan singers or whatever. Go to your brother or your sister and say, brother sister things have not been good let's make it right instead of the two only day they act like hypocrite not talking to each other but speaking in tongues and singing and giving this tainted worship to god that's why we're not seeing any power in our churches it's not because power no day they know we are the ones that are blocking the anointing because the lord come down for our work and we are resisting church was good Anybody got healed? Anybody got delivered? Right? Let's stop with the hype. Oh, church was powerful today. And what? What happened? Them can't tell you. Right? No. Let's cut it out, friends. Let's really be Christians this year. Let's keep things real with God, with ourselves and with our fellow man. We can fool some of the people some of the time, but we can't fool all the people all the time. And we certainly can't fool God. All right? So let's put away the sins that easily beset us. Let's put them away. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us. All right? Stop trouble people. And we'll have less problems. You know, cut out this whole... We talk about it. Oh, the gossip, gossip. Listen. <laughs> I don't know if gossip will end before Jesus comes, but we don't have to be a part of it. You see somebody come and tear down the next person, tell them stop it. Stop it. Because when the thing gets back and around, it causes offense and it causes strife and problems. Let's not do it. All right, friends, let's pray. Lord, I give you thanks today. I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, for every single person that has joined in tonight, just to listen to what you had to say to us tonight. Lord, I pray that anyone that's struggling with offense, anybody that's harboring unforgiveness, oh God, resentment, hatefulness towards a fellow brother or sister, Lord, help us, forgive us, God, clean us out. Clean out our insides, clean out our heart. You went to the cross to do all of that, God. You went to the cross for remission of our sins. So Lord, help us not to run away from you, but to run to you and to lay ourselves bare and to open ourselves before you and say, Lord, I have sinned. Forgive me. I have harbored the sin of resentment, the sin of offense. Forgive me, Father. Father, help me. Help me. I don't want to be like this. I want to please you. Help us, Lord. Help each of us. To realize, God, that this is something that stops and blocks our progress in you. Lord, when we should be worshiping, we're thinking about what the person did to us. Lord, help us to find ways, ways in using wisdom, oh God, to deal with our situations. Your word is there. Your instructions are there. Help us to follow it. Help us, oh God, not to hide behind a title, hide behind some sort of post or position in the church while we're harboring resentment, harboring offense, harboring grudges, oh God. Help us to release it in the name of Jesus. Help us to give it up, Father, so that we can experience you in a brand new way. Lord, so many want to see your power. So many want to flow in your anointing. So many want to flow in signs, miracles, and wonders. But Lord, these sins easily beset us. Help us, God, to make it right before it's too late. Help us, Lord, not to push your voice away. When you come to us and you say, go, 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 go now. Here is your window of opportunity to make things right. So Lord, I thank you right now. I bless your holy name because, Lord, I know that you're working on the hearts of your people. So help us, God, that even when we turn up in your sanctuary tomorrow, during the week, on the weekend again, that, Lord, we're not there playing, playing hypocrite. Help us not to play the fool, O oh God, in your presence, thinking that you do not know what's going on. 
Lord, all I'm asking is that you help us. Give us a spirit of boldness to deal with those things that are setting us back. Lord, it's not so much that you have not provided blessings for us, but we cannot access them because we have blockages in our lives and in our hearts. So help us, God, to release all those who have hurt us, all those who have said something bad about us, all those who have even tried to kill us. Lord, some people say, I cannot forgive this because it's too much. They tried to kill me. How can I forgive this? Lord, cause a release to take place. Cause a dam to break in their spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause the enemy to release his chokehold that he has on your people. Lord, your name is greater than any offense than any situation so lord i thank you right now that you're working on the inside of your people and you're causing them oh god to take stock and to say jesus i need you father i need you and i need you now otherwise i cannot make it i cannot make it without you so lord i thank you right now that you're working on hearts lord that you're working even on the heart of the other person as well Lord, make them receptive to what you're doing because, Lord, you want to move with power in this season. And these are the things that are setting us back. When we should be unified, God, we are divided because of our differences. So, Lord, help us to set these things aside so that we can see your glory. We sing it, Lord, I want to see your glory. But inside of us, God is tearing up with resentment, with hate. Oh God, help us. Help us to realize the error of our ways and to just cry to you, God, because we need you. We need help. We need help. Help us, God. Help us, Father. Lord, I praise your name right now because I know that you're shifting things in the atmosphere. And Lord, let it begin even tomorrow, God, when we turn up into your sanctuaries all over, let there be a break in the atmosphere. Let there be a breaking in the spirit, oh God, where people will not be able to worship until they have made it right. Break us, God. Break us. Break us. Melt us, oh God. Mold us again. Give us hearts of love once again. Break out these hearts of stone and return to us, God, hearts of flesh so that we can operate according to your will and to your way. So Lord, I thank you right now that we have made a decision to just release, release everybody and everything that have done, said, whatever it is that they have done, help us to release them, God, and your freedom will come. So Lord, we bind up hate, we bind it up, we bind it up in the name of Jesus and we loose love. We lose forgiveness. We lose communication, oh God. Because Lord, we're living in perilous times. And nothing right now should really be setting us back in our lives. So Lord, hear our prayer. Look at our hearts, Lord. Man, look at the outward. But you see the depths of our heart. Help us to be real. Help us to be genuine. Help us to be loving, oh God. Help us to share your love, 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 love in the name of Jesus. I decree it and I declare it that love will rule, love will reign and hatred got to go. Offense got to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Friends, walk in God's word. Walk in boldness. Watch and see what God will do this year. I mean, I get excited when I think about what's going to come to the lives of people when they start to walk God's way. When we start to do things God's way. Let's stop making excuses for the foolishness that we're doing. Let's, let's stop it. Let's just cut it out. Yes, easier said than done, but with God, all things are possible. Make up your mind. Make up your mind that you're just going to release because you want freedom. Right? Not only will you be free, but you'll be blessed, favored of the Lord. You will now 
access those things that were tied up, wrapped up, can't get it, have a lot of dreams, goals, and aspirations, but so many things were standing in the way. So I thank you, friends, for listening tonight. I pray that something you heard would cause some sort of transformation to take place. Watch God. Watch God. Genuinely cry out to God and say, God, you see this? Fix it, God. Because I know that my God is a fixer. All right? So you be blessed now, friends. Walk in total victory and freedom. Don't let the enemy tangle you up again. Tie rope around your foot with these old situations. Keep resurfacing, resurfacing. Uh-uh. Tell the devil no. Say, I have forgiven that. I have released that. And that's no longer my problem. All right? Give back the devil his, his baggage. You don't carry on the rest of this year with no baggage. All right? Release, man. Just leave yourself free. Let the Spirit of God work on your life. All right? And he will work on the other person too. Okay? All right. God bless you. You know, God bless you tonight. Thank you for joining in. So many of you, I'm not even going to call names, but may the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and cause you to walk in total victory. 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 That's the word. Victory. All right? So you take care. God bless you.